like the real deal now. You're gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number three of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown Live from the past week. Also during the show, we have our top moments of the week called The List of Ten in WWE Headlines where we talk about any important news related to to the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. And after you're done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself, on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, and iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching Lowdown Show. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Bar WP. Enjoy the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We are also available to follow on Facebook and Instagram by searching No Holds Bar WP. All links will be posted for you down in the description below. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the Blissful Boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Yep. Woo! Woo! Back from my <laughs> uh, week hiatus. Yeah, and we had a special guest, Michael Chow, last week on the show. Did a good job. Yeah, Shout right. out to him. It was a little longer than expected, but you know, that's all right. Um, I think it worked out well. Uh, I was afraid of the Skype call maybe dropping like midway through or something. You know, I had my fears, normal fears, but you know, it didn't happen. So we're good. Um, anyways, uh, I'm feeling WrestleMania hangover, man. And I think... We know how Vince is to blame with this, the early shakeup. But ever since then, I just, oh man, I've been experiencing some major WrestleMania hangover. Everything just look looks way out of place. There's no, there's like a lack of direction for a lot of feuds right now. Raw doesn't even have a main feud. I mean, it's Strowman and Reigns, but their, their main title is not even being incorporated into it. <laughs> and then you got reverse roles on SmackDown. It's just a whole, it's just a huge mess. Like oh, I, I just, again, I, I read a lot of people on Twitter. People are feeling that hey, WrestleMania hangover, man. It's it's lingering around, and now we're what like two weeks in, three weeks in, and then to the new season. It doesn't even look like it's getting better. <laughs> I feel like the shakeup was stupid. It's almost like we have to wait for that payback hump. When we get over that, it will be you know right back into normal things. You know, um, Greg says what's up, guys, in the chat. What's up, Greg? And we got Juggy Brown also listening in on the chat. Hide the women. The big dog is here. <laughs> Hide the women. <laughs> the hell? Tell you, Brown, we uh, watched your unboxing video. We loved it, by the way. We uh, we love that you liked everything in it. And, uh, and we will not be giving you Roman Reigns' theme music. Yeah, we can't no. do that. I, I can't bring my... You know about... You don't mean Roman Reigns. I can appreciate you loving Roman Reigns. You know, I agree with you, what you said in your unboxing video. I can't sit here... And play Roman Reigns' theme song. You gotta, you gotta, you know, feel me on that, man. I, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. This is not happening. Juggy, where the hell were your tweets this week? Yeah, Juggy. You're a Twitter fan of the month. Where are your tweets? I better get an answer from you in the in, in the chat here about where your tweets at. That's all right. I still give you your honorable uh, Twitter fan of the month shout out. So shout out to Juggy Brown, Azazo YT. He's got his own YouTube channel. Guys, go check him out and give him a subscribe. Does some, uh, I think I've seen some Call of Duty videos on there and some other stuff. So go check him out, guys. Juggy Brown. <sighs> Uh, oh, Juggy Brown says they're posted. Oh. I don't know. Maybe I missed them. We botched then. I'm sorry. They Forgive must have us. been really late. Must have been really late. Did you post them like recently, like today? Actually, there's I got six notifications here. He did just post them. Ah! Oh, just in time there, he did Juggy. 28 minutes ago. All right. Good, 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 good. All right. Pre- we can appreciate that, you know. Yeah, you don't serve us uh, some no tweets here. So. <laughs> Oh, we got a tweet from Michael Chow. Just curious, but why is No Cell Phil not on the show anymore? <laughs> oh, Michael Chow. Okay, we'll tell you right now why. And uh, I don't care if No Cell Phil's listening. <laughs> it's just, it was his opinion, Mike, uh, Michael Chow. Uh, he didn't like that we branched off and did other shows on the podcast, uh, a.k.a. the Sunday Night Heat. So he felt, in his opinion, that he didn't want to be a part of it. So we let him go. It was a mutual thing. <laughs> There's no hate. We still we still love the kid. We still hang out with the kid. We still watch wrestling with the kid. He does. He doesn't like go to events. He doesn't like dirt sheets. Yeah, he doesn't like the dirt sheets either. So that's that's all right. You so. know, people got uh, 
we got to spread people's opinions on things. You can't just, you know, harp them out in the podcast. It's okay. Can you imagine if we had three people, how long a show would be? Yeah, the, my piece here, my equipment can't handle another mic right now. So <laughs> I don't know how would we even incorporate him. He's so, have to yell in the background, but that's all right. Best, Greg says he loves the Sunday heat. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> best we got of, a special one coming out this Sunday, so stay tuned. But best it's of luck our, in your future uh, endeavors, no yeah. self fill. <laughs> if I give you a, <laughs> if I give you a sneak peek for this Sunday's episode, it will be uh, our episode ten. Oh God! Of the Sunday night heat. <laughs> yeah. And it will be a perfect ten. So that's a little teaser for you. So stay tuned for Sunday and uh, Sunday night heat episode. A really good episode. Uh, I'll be recording. I think later on tonight or t- possibly tomorrow, and then posting it on uh, Sunday. Won't be doing it live. I don't have time on Sunday. I, I work Sunday, so I can't do it. Um. Anyways, we're getting off track here. Um. Oh, you got anything to rant about today? No, I got no rant. It's been a really uh, empty well, week. Besides your Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. We'll see. What <laughs> playoffs still going on. Um, two ways you can support the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I got to make these plugs in. I'm gonna. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the intro. Maybe I'll include it in the that. But two ways you can support the podcast. One, our GoFundMe account, which is solely based on us going to WrestleMania next year. Um, we've had lots of people tweet at us in the past for, you know, ways to support the podcast and we got nothing still. So I'm not sitting here making you guys do it. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you want to support the podcast, go ahead and go, it, give me a dollar. I don't care what you donate. Everything helps. It goes towards us and getting to WrestleMania next year. You know, it's not cheap, especially us Canadians going into the States. It costs us like double. So anything helps, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support the podcast, you can go to GoFundMe or if you want to be a monthly subscription, go to patreon.com slash NHBWP. Uh, links will be all in the YouTube description for you, and you can support the podcast that way. And you get some interesting stuff. You, if you read what the, the – there's, you can donate as little as a dollar a month. But each one has a specific uh, amount of prizes you get for donating. I'm not going to say you make you do the $100 one. I just – Patreon made me do it. It's like, you, you want a $100 one? Okay, whatever. I'll just type something in there. I don't expect anyone to do it. I'm just saying that's ways to support the podcast. So those are the two ways to support the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, links will be in the YouTube description for y'all. Um – we are planning on restructuring the Lowdown show in a way we're still in talks with that. Uh, someone didn't mention it. I forget what show. It was either on a Lowdown or an Orlando show or a podcast after. Someone mentioned on Twitter that uh, we should do the first hour of the review and we can condense it into key highlights. And then the second hour would be for Skype calls. Um, the only way I think we can do that is if we get enough uh, commitment to people calling in. I just don't want to sit there and play with my thumbs. For an hour. Or we'll just end the show if no one calls yeah. in in 10 minutes. And then that will be solely based on us just talking about the week of wrestling and anything you want to talk about. So we're there's some planning in the works for restructuring the Lowdown show, so stay tuned for that. Other than that, we're going to keep the way it is right now. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm feeling WrestleMania hangover hardcore. <laughs> like, there's been very confusing bookings and on and off matches like you know, Randy Orton yeah. and, and Bray Wyatt. It's not a WWE title match anymore. I've kind of been disinterested lately. That's because I've been focused on school the last couple of weeks. But yeah. other than that, it's just, I don't know. Again, it's like it's almost since the shakeup. It's just, it's literally shaken everything up to a point of unorganized bullshit. The injury bug is also on the rise. People getting hurt here and there. We got Kofi getting hurt. Uh, the Revival getting hurt. Finn Balor basically almost getting his head knocked off his shoulders from Jinder or Juice or Mahal. <laughs> um, so it looks like it's on the rise. And it looks like it's only happening on Raw. Well, technically SmackDown, but Kofi hurt his ankle on Raw, so before he went over to SmackDown. So you can't. It, it's almost like SmackDown is a safe place to be, <laughs> and it's uh, it's it's weird. I don't know, but they look like the injury bugs on the rise too. So it's been a weird week in WWE. I don't think any of the shows were too exciting. They're bland. Both Raw and SmackDown I'm getting that in the reviews. Um, but no Roman Reigns this week. I'm sure Juggy Brown was pissed off at that. <laughs> uh, didn't get to see his big dog uh, anyways uh, so before we, as we do always in the show before we get into the review we read your tweets out there and since you sent them in thank you Juggy Brown appreciate it man uh, oh he just said I've had <laughs> I've had to just watch the year 2000 episodes of Raw and Smackdown to get my fixed <laughs> super pissed <laughs> uh, okay so, anyways, Juggy Brown, you're getting your tweets read first since he's our March Twitter fan of the month, ladies and gentlemen. If you win Twitter fan of the month, you get your shout out on the show and you get your tweet read first right here on the show. So we'll start off with Juggy Badass. This is Zazel underscore YT on Twitter. 
All right, guys, the big dog is here. And what do you think about this week? What in the actual fuck is wrong with SmackDown? How the hell is Jinder Mahal number one contender? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean steroid Mahal. He has done absolutely nothing except damn near kill Finn Balor. It's true. Uh, he also puts, I'm all for giving new superstars the spotlight. Uh, I'm all for mixing it up, but this is bullshit. Rate, <laughs> fuck ratings. Raw wins this week just because of the cringing situation. On a more positive note, he is the big dog. Fun fact about Juggy this week. One of my favorite matches of all time is Angle vs. The Undertaker at No Way Out 2006 for the world title. That gave me goosebumps. Oh, and hashtag. <laughs> Juggy, I'm surprised you put that hashtag there, man. He just beat up on your you boy. He just beat up your boy and you put a hashtag <laughs> boy. You made me play it. I don't know, man. That's uh, You better say sorry to Roman Reigns after that. I don't think he appreciated that. <laughs> Anyways, we'll get into more of your tweets out there once I pull it up here. Are they glorious tweets? <laughs> They're as glorious <laughs> as Greg puts. It was glorious not to see hashtag no man games. <laughs> oh my god, he loves the no man games. Yeah, I love it too. Yeah. Uh, so we'll start off with some more tweets and we'll start off with glorious Greg. I got him right here. Raw was okay. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It was great to see Strowman destroying shit. It sucks the revival will be gone until July. Yeah, that does suck. That's really bad. That's terrible, man. It just sucks for one of them because the other one's not even injured. Scott Dawson's going to literally pick his ass for three months. He'll be like, I'm I'm guessing he'll be featured on Raw maybe once a month. And then he'll just be like live event heavy. He'll go one-on-one with someone at a live event. Or he'll team up with someone at a live event. That's a... (laughs) <laughs> Juggy Brown hashtag fuck you, Greg. Man. <laughs> Those two got a rivalry going on. I love it. Um, maybe he teams up with the club. Oh. I mean, he's a cue ball just like them. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, yeah, cor- corporate glorious Greg puts. Uh, he also speaking of Greg, he puts SmackDown was meh. I'll give it a six. Oof, that's a generous rating. Also, just sucks that Jinder is the number one contender for the world title. I feel like both shows. Could have had the IC title stay on SmackDown, US title on Raw, just Owens and Ambrose should vacate the titles, or wait, should vacate the titles, but they should both be guaranteed th- uh, thoughts at the vacated titles on the brand that they are on. So Ambrose would go for the US title and Owens for the IC title, and he thinks it would make more sense. There would be Rush this Superstar Shakeup, hashtag shake my head, hashtag not best for business, hashtag disappointed. They didn't think it out at all. No, it was just like, oh, it looks like a good idea. Let's just fire it out there. You could tell by the moves they did. They didn't take no thought into it. Pretty much. Okay. Let's move Kalisto over, and then let's move Sin Cara and switch yeah, Let's move Kalisto over to go into a trash bin like we saw this week. That makes sense. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Casey Salvis at oh, Salvis94 is next tweet. Here we go. Uh, for the first time, Raw was way better than SmackDown. Great to see Braun destroy everybody. And the best part, Roman Garbage Reigns, was off my TV. <laughs> Maybe he should join the unemployment line. Nobody would care if he was on Raw. It's funny, Raw was better when he was off TV. <laughs> oh, God. Sounds sounds like he's bitter from his Montreal Smackdown Canadians. that was awful. Jinder, Steroid, Mahal. Really, nobody wants to see Orton versus him. It would be an awful match. He's right. Rather watch paint dry than that. Sami Zayn buried again, different show, same story. AJ and Owens should be in the main event, not pathetic Mahal, Mr. Steroid. <laughs> At least AJ won, though it may be, it, it, may, it will be a better show next week. Raw, 8 out of 10. SmackDown, 2 out of 10. <laughs> Only because of styles. <laughs> Some interesting ratings, and as always, thank you, Casey Salas, for your tweets. We enjoy them every single week. <laughs> Greg, but those tweets roasting Reigns were amazing. <laughs> and Juggy Brown, hashtag Raw is Reigns. Yeah, Raw, Reigns always wins. <laughs> Anyways, next set of tweets, they come from your boy Tony Mercer. Oh. At Requem, why not? He puts, Raw was, a sol- was solid, and Braun was made to look like a star and being the focus of the show. 7 out of 10. SmackDown was very weird, but I kind of liked it. 6 out of 10. Interesting, simple tweet right there from uh, Tony Mercer. Thank you, as always, Tony Mercer. We appreciate your tweets, as always. 
Next set of tweets. Now, this is a good one. I've been waiting for these guys for a long time. Uh, definitely one of our first podcasts we followed back when we first start, started this podcast. And they decided to share us with some tweets this week. So, guys, this is RTM Wrestling's thoughts. And, you guys, they do a fantastic UK-based podcast, if you don't already know. So go give them a follow on Twitter and go subscribe to them on YouTube. They do a lot of WWE stuff. And they're also doing some ICW stuff, uh, some UK independent stuff, which is really cool. I really enjoy some of their thoughts on and takes on that. They do some uh, live reactions on their YouTube channel. So go get, check them out, guys, at RTM Wrestling on Twitter. They put, Raw was good unlike the Braun and Big Show match. Or it was good until the Braun and Big Show match. <laughs> then it was great. <laughs> really enjoy Braun's work of late. Yes, he, his work has been in, extremely good, man. They're, they're definitely high on him, and they're definitely, uh, or the early rumors early in the year of them pushing him, they're definitely coming to fruition now. Um, SmackDown was batshit crazy and made no sense all night. Loved it. Uh, keep up the good work, guys, as in to us. Thank you, RTM Wrestling. You guys keep up the good work. You, uh, uh, and, oh, God, I always forget your two names. We got uh, Pocket Rocket Emma over there, and uh, I think his name's Andrew. <laughs> I, I hope I get that right. Don't criticize me if I got that wrong. <laughs> I think your name's... It's either Andrew or Adam. I'm sorry. Either way, I think they're going to Mania next year, too. Yeah, so, so it'll be a RTM Wrestling and No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast meetup for the first time. I'm sure we'll get a picture <laughs> in for Twitter for that. Um, uh, next set of tweets, Joshy J. At Joshy underscore J. He puts, really enjoyed Raw again. Women's and tag team divisions are so deep and having Braun destroy everything all night was awesome. <laughs> SmackDown was meh, kind of boring, but the six-pack challenge was awesome. Oh, someone liked it. I, I don't know. It, 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 it was good and it was bad. There were some good parts and some bad parts. Uh, he also puts, unpopular opinion, but I like seeing Jinder win. It's nice seeing a heel that everyone legitimately hates. Raw 8.5, SmackDown 4. P.S. The Drifter should be given all the titles ASAP. <laughs> Oh, God. Can you imagine? Uh, stress. Anyways. Next set of tweets. At Laughing Shovel. Hashtag Fire JBL. Who is also Luke Tonkinson. Who is also Luke Tonkinson. <laughs> uh, I can't give a rating or comment. Oh, okay. Sorry. I read this backwards. I apologize. <laughs> Laughing Shovel. Luke Tonkinson. I read him backwards. Uh, he puts for Raw. Raw was okay this week. Uh... Strowman was amazing. Oh, he did put I'm back with a, a, a Shaq gif. I'll add to include that. He yeah. was like dancing. He was a little shoulder shrug. Uh, Strowman was amazing, especially the backstage segments. But at WWE really needs to find a new ring. It always collapses when two big guys fall from the top rope. <laughs> this is true. WWE, what the hell? You got to find some new rings, man. You got to support the you gotta support the four or five it's, live division. It's only Big Show. <laughs> Why was the why was there another Enzo and Cass Gallows and Anderson match? There was just a superstar shakeup, but they still put them in the same tag team matches. That's why I said they should have went to SmackDown, but yeah. nope. The women's division finally feels fresh. The superstar shakeup did a good job for that. As always, the Hardys are amazing. The best thing about Raw this week, Roman Reigns wasn't on TV. <laughs> Raw gets a six out of ten. Another person enjoying Roman Reigns. Yeah, Juggy, your boy's getting bad torched. You, Juggy, your boy's getting just roasted. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, for SmackDown, he puts a smack. The woman's segment at the start of SmackDown was great. Great. Okay, well we'll see my opinion. <laughs> wow. Okay. Number one contenders match was good, but why steroid Mahal? Just why? A decent woman's match between Naomi and Charlotte. It wasn't the best. Hopefully, the woman's title next week will be better. <laughs> yes, Juggy Brown is not starting to give a hell about Enzo and Cass. Yeah. They're, they're slowly slipping into jobber status. It's crazy. Uh, anyways, uh, more tweets from Luke Tonkinson. The tag team match was filler. Filler and more filler. The burial of American Alpha continues. What is, a Smackdown li- what is the SmackDown Live tag team division? <laughs> what is it? I don't think it's even a division. <laughs> it looks like it's slowly gaining power, though. We got... Uh, the Bollywood boys joining uh, gender, and they're called like the Singh brothers or something. It's Singh, motherfucker. And we got the uh, Primo and Epico as just Primo and Epico now. Cologne. Get the colognes. Uh, I can't give a rating or comment of the rest of the show due to the amazing electric supply in England. Hashtag power cuts. <laughs> that sucks. You didn't really miss much. Smackdown was meh. 
So we'll get into that in the review. But thanks for your tweets, Luke Talkins, and that laughing shovel, hashtag FireJBL, whatever you want to be called. Um, <laughs> thank you for your tweets, as always. We do always appreciate your tweets. And the next set of tweets, who actually has a theme song for winning our 2016 No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast Fan of the Year... That's right, it is Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV on Twitter. He also does a WWE podcast, guys, so go give him a follow on Twitter. WWE MCTV. WWE MCTV, the after show. Go follow him on Spreaker as well. He also does a WWE podcast like ours, but claims we are better than him. And I'm going to have to take that compliment. I'm just going to take it, take and it, uh, he's, take it in. He's doing, take it in. Take it in. Man. He's also doing a contest for payback so yeah, he does contest too on his podcast go oh and my listen, god guys, and listen for those contests he's doing one for payback we have our recent winner here also one of the recent winners corporate cappy and he won a signed picture of alexa bliss with a certificate of authenticity on it oh my god and it's guys, fantastic he, he's got some great prizes go give him a follow and check out his contests uh so his tweets raw takes it this week never thought i'd say that eight out of ten wow We'll give it. We'll give SmackDown Live the benefit of the doubt until after Backlash. Don't let me down. <laughs> uh, extremely happy. Both of my favorite girls, hashtag Monday Night Bliss and the Queen of SmackDown Live, are both on number one contend or both number one contenders, baby. Okay, Charlotte. I got nothing to <laughs> say about that. Hashtag woo. <laughs> hashtag Robo Charlotte. <laughs> I am the number one, one contender. contender. <laughs> Naomi, you are a paper champion. I will not feel the glow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he puts the question, is it too soon for Alexa and Charlotte to be going for both shows' championships immediately after the draft? What's the rush? I agree. They shouldn't be going. They were just champions, both of them. What the hell are they going <laughs> for the title again? So we're just... We're, Where's this opportunity to the new guy? You just brought back Emma, and you're just sticking her in a cringe segment with fucking Dana Brooke. Oh, you just gave me another uh, idea for my list moment. Oh, my God. Garbage. <laughs> Juggy Brown says, Cappy, how do you feel about Bliss pinning the boss? I was just happy to see them on top of each other. <laughs> hey. Damn. <laughs> uh, I tweeted into Michael Chow's podcast that it was bittersweet. Yeah. Uh, Michael Chow, Smackdown Live, 2 out of 10. Orton, Usos, Dillinger, Nakamura, Becky Lynch, not in matches. What the fuck? Was SmackDown Live's created team traded to Raw as well? Very bad. Question. Rest in peace, Rosie. Yes, rest in peace, Rosie. If you guys didn't know, Rosie, uh, Roman Reigns' actual brother, died earlier this week. So thoughts and prayers go out to his uh, the Inoue family. Um, he puts, what's your favorite memory? Mine was when Raw's Bischoff and 3-Minute Warning invaded SmackDown Live to destroy Stephanie, Billy, and Chuck. Oh, God, yeah, I remember that. I think, wow, what a question. I think the one that sticks out to me was when... They, like, completely destroyed Lillian Garcia. Oh, my God. Yeah, that too. Oh, my God. Like, I'm getting the flashbacks now. Every, every time someone's mentioning something, and I'm getting the flashbacks. I remember Rosie was on the top rope, ready to hit her with the splash, and, like, someone threw, like, a roll of toilet paper at him. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, you know, first thing that comes to mind, it, it's a three-minute warning moment, but it's... I, I love... I always go back and watch this tag team match. I suggest you guys go and watch it. It's Survivor Series 2002. It was three-minute warning with Rico versus uh, Jeff Hardy, D Bubba Ray Dudley, and Spike Dudley. And that was also the return of Devon Dudley after his stupid... Uh, Reverend Devon. <laughs> Devon gimmick. And, oh my god, that match was incredible. We had Jeff Hardy doing an incredible swanton off the, the freaking edge of the arena. It was just amazing. That match is incredible. And that just sticks out because Rosie and Jamal actually look really dominant in that match. And I remember them when they first came out of Streaming Warren, they looked dominant because Eric Bush always would send them out. And they go, this match is three minutes too long. And they just completely destroy these people. But this match definitely uh, proved themselves, I think. It, it was just incredible. If you go back and watch it, guys. Survivor Series 2002. Uh, great tables. Uh, Six-way tag team match. I kind of feel like the authors of Pain are trying to be the next <laughs> three-minute warning. Yeah. Uh, Jaguar dude, Rosie as Hurricane Helm psychic was awesome. Hashtag hamburger. What? The, the S-H-I-T? Yeah. That was great. A lot of people <laughs> love that moment. A lot of people were tweeting about that as well. Um, next tweet, Mason Dunbar at Dunbear Vlogs. Raw was decent. I gave it a 5 out of 10. SmackDown Live was awful, in my opinion. I don't understand why I'll becoming number one contender. 3 out of 10. Thank you, Mason Dunbar Thank Vlogs, you, Mason. for your tweets. 
And I think that is it. No, we're missing a couple. Oh, we're missing a couple. I got them right here. My bad. Uh, next set of tweets, Tyler Jones. No, no. Tyler Jones underscore he's back. 22. I'm he's sure back. he's happy because this is boy Bronze finally got a t-shirt. Yeah, he shot. Put, this is what he puts. Braun finally has a shirt. And fuck you, Irrelevance. I'm getting it first. Hashtag. <laughs> Uh, and Irrelevance didn't even comment this week. So, yeah, uh, Irrelevance. Where are you at? Tyler Jones is calling you out too there. We got some We got some rivalries going on right now. This yeah, is right, I, these are better feuds than fucking WWE's yeah, feuds right now. We're, we're going to have the Knowles Bard Wrestling Podcast shake-up though. We got to stop this. <laughs> we got to shake things up a little bit. Um, <laughs> next ad tweets from Colin at Gamanu1. Raw was great. It's good to see Balor wrestle after Asshole Mahal. Braun destroying the Raw roster in the ring was fantastic. 9 out of 10. Give it a 9 out of 10. Wow, it's a high rating. SmackDown was not so great. Matches were entertaining. What the fuck is up with the U.S. and world title confusion and why the fuck Mahal? 5 out of 10. <laughs> for, for such a hateful SmackDown tweet, that's a high rating. I would give it like a 2. But we'll get into my rating later on. Um, and Colin Game Anyone did post to us uh, two like uh, custom unused themes for Raw and SmackDown. I actually enjoyed them. I listened to them. They're okay. I, I don't know. If it, it, I don't know. It's just. It seems more like NXT ish. Yeah, yeah. I, especially the Raw one. I think that would be a cool replacement. I like NXT's new theme. I still haven't heard NXT's new theme. It's really good. I'll have to show you after. But I know now that's it for the tweets. We had a lot of a lot of tweets this week, ladies and gentlemen. Thank and you. I'm a hundred percent sure I got them all. If I miss it, I do apologize. We did have a lot there, and I didn't. I should have taken time to filter him out today, and I didn't. And we kind of botched him up. I wanted to go to my boy Tim Hortons to get a coffee so bad, so I kind of forgot to do that. Um, that's it for the tweets. Thank you. We do appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. We do appreciate it every goddamn week for those tweets. Appreciate the love. So keep sending them in. Look out for the tweets. The tweet will be released every Wednesday at some point. It will be pinned to the Knowles Bard Wrestling Podcast Twitter. And that's where you'll be able to leave your responses. So, and you'll have time because usually we do the show on Friday. Friday, so you got two days to give your responses. So, anyways, we're done with the tweets. Let's get into the reviews. We'll start out with Raw live from the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. Thank Ohio. You. My apologies. Thank I you. Should have known better. Um, <laughs> Booker T on commentary. Oh, shucky ducky quack quack. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) I got one thing to say about that. It was going to be good. It's going to be good for the next six weeks. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Tundra will come back and then. Got a little excited. I love Booker on commentary. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Greg puts Tyler Jones and Prince Jones, the best tag team of the No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast. Oh, (laughs) God. Anyway. The Jones Brothers. I'm just going to leave that alone and go into the Raw review. Uh, Opening segment Braun Strowman opened the show this week. Interesting. I never. I, has Braun ever opened the show yet? I think no, the and he got the greatest baby face reaction I've ever. Heard. Oh my god! And he gets in the ring. He talks about all the all the things he's proud of that he's done to Roman Reigns. That uh, Roman Reigns isn't here tonight, and the crowd starts chanting "Yes, great." Uh, now that Reigns is out of the way, Strowman is going to tear through the locker room to show he is the monster among men. Which they made that line to a T-shirt. So that was like the uh, debut line for his T-shirt right there. Uh, Angle then comes out, Kurt Angle, new GM, tells Strowman he's on a rampage and basically needs to calm the hell down. Uh, says he's going to give Reigns what he wants and he'll books, he books Reigns versus Strowman at payback. We're finally going to see the rematch of Fastlane. Interesting. Uh, Strowman says it'll be his funeral <laughs> at Fastlane. Okay. That was great. Angle tries to give uh, Strowman the night off. Strowman says he wants more comp. I want more competition. Or else. And Kurt like, or else what? He, like, stares him down, and Strowman just walks away. <laughs> Sick, Strowman. <laughs> I haven't seen the end of him tonight. Nope. <laughs> that was uh, just a glimpse of what we've seen of Braun Strowman. <laughs> uh, he definitely lived... He definitely finally lived up to the or else, okay? Like, usually he'd say or else, and we'd see nothing. Maybe something minor. But now, lately, he's been, you know, you know following up on his or else. Maybe he's like, oh, shit, maybe we should actually do something. We should make Strowman do something. We should make him look strong and not weak and backing down from people all the time. Now he's killed Roman Reigns. Now, what does he do tonight? He kills a bunch of other people. But first, we get Samoa Joe versus uh, Chris Jericho. Meh. Uh, Seth Rollins is on commentary for this match and for his feud with his new feud with Samoa Joe. And it's leading up to a payback match. Uh, The match with Joe and Jericho is basically like a, a payback. 
pun intended match, uh, for the attack by Joe and Owens two weeks ago. They kind of labeled that. Uh, it was a good back and forth kind of match. Too bad Jericho was leaving. I actually would love to see a Joe and Jericho feud like go on a little bit longer. Can you imagine like just Jericho ripping Joe apart with like putting him on the list and you know stupid idiot and stuff like that. Um, one point in the match, Samoa Joe locks in a Coquina clutch. Jericho reverses it into a pin, then Joe reverses even that into a fully locked Coquina clutch, and Jericho is basically forced to tap. Uh, after the match, Samoa Joe cut a promo on Seth Rollins about hurting Rollins uh, on Joe's first night, and basically saying that all you could hear was the you know the crack of his ligaments and all that stuff. Just Joe running his mouth on Rollins. Uh, Joe eventually says, "It's at payback. It's not business. It's personal." Okay, interesting. I'm not sure why. Because he basically like, defended Triple H and Stephanie. McMahon. He did, yeah. He said, I, I, I appreciate my clientele, yeah. so I take it personally. <laughs> it was, what you did to Stephanie McMahon made me sick. And I don't know if you guys saw this, but like, they needed like a spit shield for Samoa Joe. He was like spitting everywhere during this fucking promo. Yeah, I know. He was like... He's like a... Uh, you know, like DX had the, the, the mask with the, the, <laughs> the, the windshield wipers whenever... Uh, uh, what was his name? Commissioner Slaughter would talk. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, Rollins says, you know what? You know what they say about payback? He gives the old fucking classic payback line. Payback's a bitch. He said bitch on live TV. Ooh, Ooh look out. Okay. Fine coming. Wow. It was How an all right. How typical that we get a payback as a bitch line. We have to have... Do we have to... This one person have to at least say it before every payback pay-per-view? <laughs> Vince, pr- Vince probably sent Rollins out there. You gotta say this line. You gotta line. say this. I gotta, but, get off on it. You gotta say it. Come on, just do it. It was an okay match. It wasn't great. It was, uh, it was good for Jericho putting Owens over. I, um, Joe, Joe over, Jericho, sorry. Or Jericho putting Joe over. Yeah, yeah I like but... it. Uh, anyways, so we get backstage. This is where we continue with the Strowman thing. Oh, this was fantastic. It, it shows Golden Truth walking to... We had a Golden Truth sighting. We haven't seen them in like a f- month. <laughs> they were supposed to be facing uh, the club yeah, next. But then Strowman just jumps in out of nowhere and beats the crap out of both of them. <laughs> Throws gold dust through a fence. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> and he just completely beat just, down just everybody. Him. And I mean everyone. He just right hands our truth and just knocked out. Um, I bet you were glad that that didn't match didn't happen. Golden yeah, Truth versus the Club. I, I would have. I thought they were going to be added to this division, but I guess not. They're just there to do spots backstage. I guess they ne- can't wrestle anymore. I thought Goldust was in good shape. What the hell? Well, at least they're not doing no Pokemon Go anymore. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't remind me. So out comes the Club out to the ring. And a really, really savage moment here. I loved it. Uh, Ayers, Carl Anderson says, Strowman gave the Golden Truth the United Airlines truth. <laughs> Classic line. Oh, God. And now they're the ones on standby? standby? Not cool. <laughs> Gallows tells Angle that to get them the nerds, get get the nerds they can take out. And then Cash come out to the apron. Uh, then it leads to a match. The club and Zone Cash. Decent match, weird ending. Anderson basically like threw Enzo on top of the turnbuckle, which led to a pin of him holding the tight. Okay, but it felt awkward, like it shouldn't have happened. I don't know. Uh, it was weird. I don't know. The, the The match was actually better than what they've done in, in recent matches, and Enzo and Cass actually looked pretty like intense this week. But the only thing that I didn't like about this match was the the ending. It was either the the Bellman, or I'm saying Bellman because that's what Heath Slater called yeah. him, and or the ref both fucked up because right when he hit three, he like pointed at the at the the uh, the Bellman and he didn't even like ring the bell. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it, it's the ending felt weird. I don't know, I'm like, was this actually supposed to happen? Like, that, that was a weird finisher. But anyways, club wins. Club winning is always a good win in my opinion. So whatever, move on from that. Miss TV. So Miss TV making its raw return. Dean Ambrose is announced as the guest beforehand. The Miz tries to talk about uh, himself coming to Raw with someone unexpected, and then Dean Ambrose interrupts him uh, before he can even say anything. <laughs> so Miz couldn't even get a word out. Ambrose talks about them both being from Ohio, like him. Uh, uh, Miz is from uh, where is Miz from? He's from Ohio, but I forget where he's from in Ohio. Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, Dean Ambrose is from Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And they're both Ohio boys, and he gets the crowd to do some Ohio chants, and they should just call it a truth. Uh, Ambrose makes fun of the Miz's suit. Miz then makes fun of Ambrose's, uh, what Ambrose wears and says he doesn't give uh, a, su- a superstar a good image and, it's refer- and basically gets referred to as a wrestler. <laughs> you know, you're one of those hick wrestlers. Uh, Miz talks about Ambrose being afforded everything and calls him a la- lazy and complacent, 
Now, about this right here, there's some backstage talk where Miz actually had a lot of truth behind it, and officials actually believe Miz and think that Ambrose is actually lazy and complacent. So, interesting. I don't know. I don't know how... It doesn't seem in my books that he's lazy. It just looks like he's being the character you want him to be. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe the backstage officials actually agree with what Miz said then. Anyways, Ambrose says he's not a brand. He's Dean Ambrose and gives the whole I do this for me speech. And does all, you know, just the typical one. Ambrose says everything he is makes him the Intercontinental Champion. Miz ought to know Ambrose beat him for it. <laughs> Quick jab at Miz there. <laughs> um, Maurice calls Ambrose a street rat and says the belt doesn't make the man. The man makes the belt. I 100% agree with that statement. Mm-hmm. Ambrose starts uh, taking off his stuff, folds his coat, and then tosses it at Maurice as Miz is talking and attacks Miz. Maurice hits Ambrose from behind with the mic. Ambrose turns around. Miz almost hits the scroll catching finale, but Ambrose turns it into the Dirty Deeds, and Miz runs away. And that's it. So Miz and Ambrose feud intensifying for their likely A feud match that we already match. saw on SmackDown. Yep, we're seeing now on Raw. You'd think that when they got moved over, they wouldn't oh, be feuding with Ross, each other. For sure. Way better than Raw. I like this way better. No. This was... I mean, we've just seen it. Like, it was okay, but we've seen it before. Like, I don't want to see it again. Superstar Shake was supposed to shake things up, but they shook him into... He just took a feud from SmackDown and moved it over to Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That was it. <laughs> nice. Anyways. Um, backstage... After writing this stuff, we just cut right to backstage, and, and Braun's already dragging Kalisto. We didn't even see him attacking. He's already dragging Kalisto through the hallways. And he tosses Kalisto into a trash bin that rains his garbage, and so are you. It's <laughs> phenomenal. What a debut by Kalisto on Monday Night Raw. You get dragged through the hallways by Braun Strowman. He's thrown into a into dumpster a trash bin. Can. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Strowman then gets run over by Big Show. Like, basically just comes out of nowhere and just trucks him into the, like, into the garage, garage door. And... Big Show tells him to pick on someone his own size. <laughs> okay. But the crowd really got behind that. You got a pop. Wow. Big Show get the pop. Paul right. White. Good for him. So we move on to a cruiserweight match. TJ Perkins versus Jack Gallagher. TJ Perkins. TJ Perkins. Before the match, Neville comes out as a is announced as a special appearance for this match. He, even got, he conveniently even had his own seat at ringside. Yeah, there. a nice little comfy chair. But then Aries comes out and makes noise, and he announces himself as an even specialer appearance. <laughs> and some weird English there. And sits right beside Neville and starts eating yeah. his banana. Yeah, he grabs like a steel chair and just sits yeah, beside him. Like right beside him. And he's always got the banana in his pocket. Yeah, I don't know what the deal with that is. Anyways, into the match, uh, there's a one spot where Gallagher uh, does the dab, like in uh, in spite of uh, Perkins. And Perkins goes and grabs the umbrella, Sir William III, and just throws it. <laughs> But it was a good match. I admit, it was a good match. They got a lot of time. I think they got like almost 10 minutes, so that was pretty good. And there was distraction uh, by both the yeah, other guys. Aries the got, there was a distraction by Aries and Neville, um, which led to uh, Perkins capitalizing with a detonation kick. I actually really like that finisher, the detonation mm-hmm. kick. And he got the win. Hill, Hill Perkins is pretty good. I like it. Um, it. It's really, really hard to see. But as uh, TJ, or TJ, Jack Aller's entrance was starting... Perkins was actually in the ring going, oh, to the crowd, oh, you want my shirt, oh, my shirt, and then just drops it. <laughs> and I don't know. I still can't take him seriously as a heel until he changes his theme music. Yeah, I think they're working on it probably. It, it, but it looks like he, his allegiance to Neville, it, I think there's there's something going on here. I think I don't know if they're going to be teamed up. I I get this, this back feeling that there's deep down feeling that Perkins is going to turn on Neville one day, and, and get, the, but he's still going to be a heel. But he's just going to want his title, you know what I mean? And there's going to be like this multi-man match for the title. I see it going that way, even though there is already the scheduled one-on-one match for payback. With Aries they got to have something for the summer, Neville. right? Yeah, something's going to happen after. That's just what I think. Um, get a backstage segment with the Hardys and Cesaro and Sheamus. And just by when Matt Hardy's talking, you can see it's, it's broken just slightly shining through sometimes. His, his accent drops a couple of times. And I think he's actually doing it on purpose, just in my mind. Um, and Cesaro and Sheamus come over, and they kind of cut a promo on each other. And it's announced that Cesaro will face Jeff Hardy one-on-one. So Jeff Hardy's first one-on-one match in nine years. Jesus, it's been that long. That's crazy. Uh, or eight, no, it's said eight years. Eight years. Um, move on 
to Sasha Banks versus oh. Nia Jax versus Mickey James versus Alexa Bliss. And I don't even want to talk about this, but it was a fatal four way to determine number one contender. We have to talk about this because their division is actually slightly getting better than what it was before. Um, it was a really good match. I actually really enjoyed this match. Lots of good spots in this match. Uh, I think the women did a fantastic job. Tease uh, rivalries throughout the match. Yeah. Uh, N- Nia Jax hit, hits a Samoan drop at one point, which is labeled as a signature move. I thought that was his finisher. finisher. Well, I think they're calling signature finishers now. Stupid. Anyways, uh, Alexa gets in the ring after the move is done and just drop kicks Nia Jax out of the ring. I don't know how that affected her so bad. Is she supposed to be this beast? How did a simple drop kick? She goes flying out of the ring and rolls out of the ring. You know, paying homage, I guess, to her her cousin The Rock and his cell job. Anyways, Alexa turns around and just covers Sasha Banks for the win. It steals it. In a way, it's not really like she beat Sasha Banks. It's just she She, cheated. She she took took advantage advantage. of a broken broken Banks. In a way, it doesn't really make Sasha Banks look weak. No. But, I mean, she was going to get pinned by Nia regardless. And Alexa Bliss getting a huge pop for being in her hometown of Columbus, Ohio. And taking and advantage of it. Number one contender. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't believe they're pushing her this fast to be the number one contender. Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. Um, I found I found it funny that because th- how what happened was Alexa or sorry Sasha and Mickey were on the top ready to do like a superplex, and then Nia came out of nowhere and just took Sasha and like used her as a battering ram yeah, to I knock see. Mickey off the top <laughs> rope. So Mickey just got like oh poor Mickey she's doing so good too and Mickey got like no reaction this week I was very oh. upset that Mickey James is not getting a- sucks, any man. pop at all at her age and what she's able to do and be a full time schedule man good for her I, Mickey I, I, James I, I, is great I don't understand why she's not getting any any reaction mm-hmm. um but I mean the match whatever Alexa won but of course she had to pin Sasha yeah at least hey at least it's not the other way around at least it's not Sasha champion right now and Alexa won a number one contendership. To face yeah, Sasha it's going to happen eventually. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to talk about it anymore. But um, uh, it was actually a good match between the four. I'll give them that. Yeah. What if they save that for WrestleMania? Oh, my God. I don't want to go anymore. <laughs> Anyways, move on. Kerr Hawkins is out here. Great. And he comes out and cuts another cringe promo. And... <laughs> Remember when you were high on this yeah, guy? Yeah, I knew that was going to come up. I just don't care anymore. <laughs> and Balor answers his challenge. And it's a quick squash match. I think we're just still unsure of his injury or not. I think I think they gave Finn an easy break yeah, tonight. They're, they're protecting him like they're and that's a good thing concussions are really serious. go out there and squash kurt hawkins yeah just and squash for a couple weeks until your head's better uh, anyways move on to a backstage promo by chris jericho and <laughs> he talks about him being it, kevin owens being the face of america and it should be chris jericho the face of jericho frame it in man <laughs> there's like he, a like, picture smiles. frame <laughs> uh talks about his w or his u.s title match at WWE title. His US title match payback and doesn't care where he ends up. He even starts listing old WWE shows like Velocity, Sunday Night Heat, and all this stuff. He made a Sunday Night Heat plug. There you go. Anyways, <laughs> but he, but wherever he goes, he'll still have the friends of Jericho with him. Uh, he thinks the backstage guy is Tom Phillips. He called him Tom. You know, I got to know it's Mike. <laughs> he's telling him, he goes, you know what happens? People think they're not Tom. And then as he's about to put on the list, the drifter walks by. Playing his guitar. Playing his guitar. And he goes, you know what, Mike, you're off the hook this week. You know what happens to people drifting by playing guitar music during Chris Jericho moment? Do you know what happens? And it puts Elias Sampson on the list. So is Elias Sampson going to end up feuding with Jericho? Is this what we're going to get? That'd be hilarious, though. Uh, I think it's just the drifter being the drifter. He, he even appeared during when the club were walking backstage. And they turned and went, oh, hey, oh, he's playing his guitar. <laughs> And we move on here to a Bray Wyatt kind of vignette promo kind of thing about the House of Horrors match. And it was okay. I, I love the production of it, but... I just don't know what the hell they're going to do with this Bray match. Bray Wyatt on Raw, it sucks, man. I can't get behind him like that. He should have stayed on SmackDown. And to go with this match, they're 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 asking fans what they should do for it. They don't even know what the fuck a House of Horrors match is. They're, they're literally... They have like eight options and then other. Yeah, other. <laughs> other. Don't have the match at all. <laughs> Small prediction, though. And I, I think I heard it in a podcast from someone else. Um, I think Balor is going to appear in this match, and it's going to be Demon Balor, and it's going to—he's going to confront Bray Wyatt to start a feud with him. Because what else is Br- it, it, Finn Balor is not going for the Universal Title? That's not happening. So what else is Finn Balor going to do? What else is Bray Wyatt going to do? I think they're going to start the feud with each other. Yeah, Juggy Brown thinks the House of Horrors match is going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Tell you right now, it's going to be terrible. It's, Especially because they're asking the fans what they should, they should do. They don't even know what to do. So 
We'll see. We'll see what happens, guys. We'll see. We don't even know if it's going to be in the ring. We don't, don't even know if it's going to be for the title. We don't know where it's going to be. We don't know. We don't know. They took the dirty title of it. That's all we know. That's it. Anyways. Why does this match even need to happen? Who I cares? Know. I don't know. I don't care. Randy Orton sucks as champion. I don't care. And now he's keeping the title. Great. Uh, Jeff Hardy versus Cesaro. One on one. Mm. And Matt Hardy coming out doing both gimmicks again. V1 and then yeah. delete. And then throughout the whole match. He's doing, he's broken. Throughout the whole match, you can hear him. If you listen close, he's like, yes, Nero, yes. <laughs> oh my god, it was great. The announcers kept call- labeling this as a dream match. What? Who's, who's dream match is Cesaro versus Jeff Hardy? Two, oh two good in-ring performers. Yeah, oh god. Chucky Brown says uh, the, the House of Horrors match might be a total non-stop deletion rip-off. Probably. It's like, can we... Bu- they buy the broken gimmick and then just rip off something they did. Well, it was actually the Hardys idea. That was all Hardys. And the TNA had nothing to do with the total non-stop deletion. They just called it that. Anyways, uh, Jeff Hardy and Cesaro. Very good match. Very good. Um, uh, Jeff Hardy. Man, that match was long. And for a guy like Jeff Hardy to put on a long match... And he was hurting. Crazy. Like, you could yeah, tell he, like, he was... Uh... And he ends up pointing with the Swanton Bomb. And both teams gave respective handshakes after the match. So I don't think – I think they're doing this because there's no clear-cut heel going into their tag team title match. Uh, I know Cesaro and Shams keep teasing somewhat like stuff like that. But I don't think there's going to be a clear-cut heel going into their match um, at Payback. I think it's just going to be face versus face. And then if Derby can finally buy the gimmick by then, I say Cesaro and Sheamus win the titles. And then we finally get Mark Hardy to be broken. And they split off from Jeff Hardy because there's talk of him going to the singles run. Um, I think that that's when we'll finally see a broken match. That's just my guess. If but, we can buy it in time. I mean, the Hardys are way over right now, and I mean they're doing a pretty good job with the titles, and I really enjoyed this match. But yeah, again, I would exp- I would I would love if they even kept the titles. I would love if they keep going on another run. They keep keep keeping it until maybe I, keep it. I love if they keep it until SummerSlam. I wouldn't care. Yeah, That'd be great. I just find it hilarious when Matt comes out and does this yes uh, thing. I just I just can't. Delete. I just laugh still every time. Delete. Still doing it. Uh, I think he's a lot more. I think he's allowed to do more of it now because Dur- he knows Derby and Tina are in talks of buying it. So uh, Derby's gonna give uh, gonna give the money. They're gonna get it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> you know how much money they can make off that? Yeah. Anyways, uh, we go on to the 405 live main event match between Braun Strowman <laughs> and Big Show. At least we're getting Big Show. At least we're getting Big Show to get some better TV time. You know, he hasn't gotten that in a while. He's getting the main event spot. Good for Big Show. He got into shape. Now he gets the main event spot. I Good. thought you don't want him there. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's a decent match. I told you this was a pretty good match. It's a decent match. It ends with the old school suplex to breaking the ring thing. They've done that a couple of times throughout WWE's history. Um, the big story here, though, is John Cone. He took a huge major bump in this match. Guys, John Cone was actually hurt. Okay, He actually did something around his neck area, shoulder area. He actually got hurt because he... He, he fell out of the ring. While it was collapsing, he fell out of it and landed on the floor. <laughs> the other two were just, like, laying yeah. there in the ring. He took the biggest so bump that's of the all. That's the big story out of this that I'm taking out. Just, I just, like, he a, got... safety of John Cone, the referee. <laughs> John Cone died for this. Yeah. <laughs> so um, eventually got to his feet and looked strong to end the show. There was a lot of near falls in this match. Like, yeah. both guys kicked out of their respective finishers. Yeah. So. I for... gave Raw 7 out of 10 this week. I thought it was all right. It was actually better than their main event that they had like a month. Remember the two months ago they had the same main event? Yeah. Show and Strowman. I actually enjoyed this one better than that one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give Raw. Raw's going to get an eight from me this week. Ooh. That's an interesting rating. I like it. I liked Raw this week. It was I, good. It was good. I'll it's, it, we haven't seen it in a long time. And it's not like we, we, we want Raw to do bad. We want it to do good. And they're actually finally putting some good product there. As much as it still sucks that it's three hours and you can still feel the lag of it. It was good. It was good. I, I feel like if this was a two, like, if this was a two hour show, I would have said this was a great show. Mm-hmm. But the fact that it's still three hours, it still drags. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, move on to the blue brand. Smackdown live from the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Fuck it, arena. KFC Yum Center. <laughs> KFC Yum Center. Oh my God. Can you imagine a sports team playing there? I'll play the KFC Yum Center. It's sponsored by KFC Golden. No, I won't say it. I don't say you don't like that. Anyways, opening segment. We open up SmackDown with an unusual sighting. 
A robot was making her way to the ring this week. <laughs> Craziness here at SmackDown Live. A robot. Can you imagine? <laughs> Anyways, it's actually Charlotte Flair in disguise. It's kicking, she's kicking off the show tonight. Interesting. She said it's been seven days since she's arrived on SmackDown Live. I'm not going to do that for the whole thing. Just saying. She's a robot when she talks. And she's already lost patience. She asked Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon are, uh, if they're on summer vacation already or perhaps binge-watching The Fast and the Furious because she, she's fastly growing furious. Holy shit, Charlotte. Shut up. <laughs> she's so bad, man. <laughs> I can't, man. It, I love Charlotte's in-ring work. I know, Michael Shaw, you love your girl, Charlotte, but her, she needs some tweaking on the mic, man. It's so, she needs it's, to stop talking like a robot. It's getting to Randy Orton status, man. Like she looks like she's reading from a teleprompter. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte demands to be put in a, a match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Naomi comes out and says, SmackDown Live doesn't have queens, but they have champions, and you're looking at one. Ooh. Naomi says she hates to see Charlotte out here begging for opportunities and wants to do it right here, right now. Okay. They start brawling with each other. Eventually, Shane McMahon cuts them off. Took you a while. Why didn't Dana Bryan come them off? I thought it was supposed to be the GM to do this shit. Where, where's Dana Bryan? I know he's got a pregnant wife at home. Maybe that's why. Um, anyways, he says, we're going to see... Shane McMahon says, we're going to see a fight here tonight. But challengers have their own opportunities. If Charlotte defeats Naomi tonight, she becomes the number one contender. Charlotte attacks Naomi to end this segment. Heaven forbid you actually just have the title match tonight. Because you know Charlotte's not winning next week. Why the hell wouldn't you just have it tonight? Get it out of the way. I don't know, man. Charlotte. I don't, I don't Char- think so. <laughs> don't think so. Oh, man. Yeah, poor Naomi if she does. I don't uh, see it happening. What about the, the, the picture you sent me of the peacock with the oh, title? Oh, yeah. I found a... Because Charlotte's old peacock outfit. I, I found a picture on Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. It was a peacock. A full-on out-and-about peacock with the woman's title around this way. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look. A Charlotte sighting. Anyways... Uh, we get a backstage segment with Natalia, Carmella, and Tamina all arguing about why Charlotte is giving a title shot already. Yeah. I agree with them. I agree with them too. I don't know for Tamina, but the other two sure. <laughs> uh, eventually, Natty calms everyone down and basically says, "Follow me, guys. We're gonna do something about this." Oh yeah, they really do a lot. Uh, we'll get into that. <laughs> but first, we get the uh, six pack challenge. Oh my god! For the number one contendership for the WWE title, and it's Sami Zayn. Luke Harper, already off to a good start, but then we get dipped. Eric Rowan, Mojo Raleigh. All right, because, you know, they deserve a WWE title shot. Uh, Dolph Ziggler and Jinder Mahal. And <laughs> we already need, don't need to reel because we know what happens. But anyways, decent match. Good spots here and there. Same as Zayn sent out for a Luva kick, but gets interfered by the Bollywood boys, who are now we're being referred to as the Singh Brothers. Uh, Jinder Mahal capitalizes and wins the match, and our number one contender is Jinder Gender, gender. Don't hinder gender. I'm hindering gender, man. This is the wrong title he should be number one contender for. What the hell are the main event guys going for the mid-card title and the mid-card guys going after the main title? <laughs> you really want to see a Randy Orton and Jinder Mahal match. That's, That's going mean... to be the worst match of all time. That's going to win worst match of the year for our Slammies right there. I guarantee it. <laughs> Unless something changed, I do not want to watch that match at Payback I do, or Backlash. I won't watch it. Yeah, you don't want to see AJ Styles have the, the Meyer title? That. I don't want to watch that match in particular. No, I, I mean, will go to the bathroom for a half hour. I back. mean, how does AJ get a mid-card title chance and then Jinder gets the main? I don't see, know what the fuck is going on here, man. Again, that's <laughs> backwards shit. I don't know what's happening. Like, Are they trying to elevate the U.S. title? Like, I even posted a GIF. Of, like, a very confused man, like, going, what? Really, that's how I feel when I look at SmackDown. I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? What? Oh, <laughs> look at that. You're dropping Drop. shit. You're all so fucking mad Anyways, about it. This, this Jinder Mahal. Why Jinder Mahal? Guy, okay, we don't even know what the deal is. We all think he's he takes steroids. There's has to, he has to take Oh, steroids. he's on a new diet. There's this bullshit thing that, that they keep bringing. <laughs> I guarantee that's why they keep bringing it up on, on live TV. Oh, he's got this new diet routine and he's working out in the gym harder. Oh, I'm so sure. He's probably popping the needles in the gym too at the same fucking time. He can eat right and still take steroids, you know. On roids or not, I'm happy for Jinder finally I'm getting a title shot. It's the wrong title. He should be going for the United States Championship. 
That would make more sense with this whole gimmick, the promo that he cut after saying that how he doesn't fit the American mold and right? stuff like that. So it would make sense for I him to go. I'm hindering Jinder hardcore right now, man. I don't give a shit. Um, I did like his promo yeah, that he, he cut after. He cuts a promo after. He says that the fans never accepted him. He wonders if it's because his heritage or the fact that he speaks two languages or that they're just better than him. He says, uh, or they're better than them. He says they'll all have to accept him as the new world heavyweight champion. <laughs> wow! Right, because you and Randy Orton are gonna have such a great match. And then right on cue, Randy Orton comes out. I'm like, oh fuck, this isn't gonna get any worse. <laughs> and congratulate, he congratulates Jinder. What are you congratulating him for? <laughs> Unbelievable. He says the he says the the prize won't be the WWE title. But her RKO beating at his hands. Whoa, fuck. Randy Orton, man. Whoa, man. You really scared Jinder Mahal. So you have to cheer for Randy Orton in this match. You know you don't want him as champion anymore. He turns, and he turns his attention to Bray Wyatt. It's weird. He starts talking about Bray Wyatt while Jinder is still awkwardly staring at her. And he's still in the same camera shot. But he's, he's talking about Bray Wyatt. Oh no, Jinder's just standing there. I'm like, get him out of the camera shot! <laughs> Done! Come on, what are you doing, man? <laughs> why does he have to talk about... Like, that's why I don't understand why he's got, like, two feuds going on at the same time. Unbelievable. It's just, he's just talking about the House of Horrors, but he'll burn it down again all the same. And Bray Wyatt cuts a promo, and they get, the, again, another vignette horror footage kind of shit, and then that was it. <laughs> and that's it. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? What did I just watch? We went from him, from Jinder Mahal cutting a promo on the crowd to Randy Orton cutting a promo on Jinder to Randy Orton cutting a promo on Bray Wyatt, then Bray Wyatt cutting a promo on Randy. It was just such a cluster <laughs> fuck, man. I, again, I I had a headache after that. I'm like, what the fuck is the, happening? The SmackDown was all this over the place. It's a shakeup because they don't know what the fuck to do after the shakeup happened. Just like they took a box of uh, crayons and shook it up, went all over the floor and said, fuck, what do we do? No, we'll just leave it there. No, just, yeah, that's good enough. It looks good. Blue is with the red over there. That's all right. Makes sense. Anyways, uh, backstage, you get Styles and Corbin that cut a really, really good promo on each other. I love the promo they cut on each other backstage in uh, Shane's office. And it leads to the main event match tonight. Baron Corbin versus Styles. All right, there you go. That's some good booking right there. Not the shit we just got before that. We got the good backstage promo, which leads to a good main event. And then now we get the, the fallout of what Charlotte or what Natty, Tamina, and Carmella was like, oh, let's go do Aww. something about this. They, they kind of stand in front of her, but do absolutely nothing. They Heaven nudge. forbid they lay a finger on her. Charlotte walks by and Natty nudges. Oh, you nudged her. Ooh, wow. Wow, <laughs> Natty. You really showed Charlotte. You really showed. It's a, it's a robot. You got to do something better than that. You got to get a baseball bat or something. Anyways, it, it, they did nothing. Unfucking fucking They absolutely nothing. It was lackluster. There, and, was, and just, uh, there was a picture of the three and I said... Uh, cr- cringe wrestler and no personality, Tamina. Cringe, uh, cr- cringe commentary and cringe cat, Naomi, and cringe being cringe. held back by Cringeworth. Yeah, was the, the this so, whole yeah, team cringe? Team cringe. Yeah, the Cringellas. Anyways, you get Charlotte versus Naomi, and again, if Charlotte wins, she becomes the number one contender. So quick, they did stuff so quick. Again, what else is new? Everybody jump the gun. They always jump the gun. She's got to come to expect. They got to make Charlotte a ten-time champion for the end of the year. Yeah, God, I think they're seriously doing. I think they want her to be a sixteen-time champion, just like her dad. And they're just trying to get it all the way so they can just do whatever they want with her right after that. She's four-time already. God, she has no prestige in my eyes, like none. Uh, decent match, some good spots. Uh, Charlotte with a big victory with the natural selection. She's number one contender. Great again, like we just said, rush, 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 rush. And backstage, she walks into the trio of women again, but they do absolutely nothing. Again. Twice. You could have done something, and you did nothing. So How am I supposed bad. to take them seriously? So fucking Three bad. of them can't attack one person. They take a good division and made it... It's like... They took a good division on SmackDown and made it good on Raw, and it made the SmackDown one shit. I'm not liking the SmackDown women's division right no, now. No, God, it's terrible. And I mean, yeah, obviously they took my girl away, but they also took Mickey away, which was also a big piece of I, it. I honestly, I'm going, I'm hoping, I'm sticking to what I believe is they're leaving some room for Peyton Royce and Oscar to come up to SmackDown because they have no room on Raw. They don't need to be no, on Raw. Because it just seems like Charlotte's going to run over this division. Yeah. I hope it gets called. I think Peyton Royce is getting called up soon, actually. I don't think it's going to be any uh, too much longer now, especially when we found out yesterday that Ty Dillinger 
If you guys don't know, Ty Dillinger and Peyton Royce have been dating for two years. Two years! They've been keeping it secret. They've been keeping it secret until yesterday we saw Perfect 10, that a boy. Um, so I think uh, for travel's sake, and I know I'd like to keep uh, couples they like together. I'm taking a jab there at Del Rio and Peyton. <laughs> um, I think we're going to see Peyton Royce on SmackDown. <laughs> Or Asuka. And even at the Peyton Royce is fantastic. She do a lot for that division. If they bring up Billy Kay, they got the whole uh, iconic thing going on. And Asuka is going to... Asuka and Charlotte are going to have a match one day. We, we know what's happening. It could be a, a, even as close as SummerSlam. People say they want to see Asuka called up undefeated. I think it could happen. We got... Paige got called up with the title and she had to drop it. She didn't lose it. She just got called up. I think Amber Moon would be good for SmackDown too. Paige only... Still only the two... The holder of both belts at the same time just saying because no one else has been allowed to do that yeah i know that's right damn straight <laughs> anyways we move on to epico and primo cologne now being billed as them don't you miss the shining stars no i do not i love this <laughs> i love this and they face the american alpha it was a really quick match though surprisingly and epico and primo being booked with their last names cologne would love to see carlito come back and do a triple faction would love that can you imagine the colognes versus the new day i can see it and carlito's good at jawing yeah because those two aren't Anyways, American Alpha, what the fuck? What's going on with them? They, they should have moved to Raw, like I said. They're, they're literally pointless on SmackDown now. Yeah, and they lose this match, and they're losing a lot of momentum. Uh, Epico and Primo look like they're being built better, which is great. I love. I would have gotten behind them if they were built better with the Shining Stars. They didn't. They, they, they just booked shitty, and now they're being booked properly. They got a sick finishing move, and they're a lot more serious. They got back to the Epico and Primo theme. I can get behind them as a, a credible heel team in the this sort of building of a tag team division on SmackDown. So, no more the Shining Stars, Los Matadores garbage. No. No. So move on to Kevin Owens, Face of America, U.S. Open Challenge. Oh, my God. Boy, was this over ever an open challenge. I had a little hype for this until we got the j- local jobber. What in the actual fuck was the point of this? Why did he need to face a local jobber? Because it's showing that Owens is a coward. Have Dillinger or someone else show up. Because Owens is a coward. Unbelievable. They're making him look so bad. Owens wins the match faster than the Goldberg and Lesnar match. After the match, Owens tells the fans to put their hot dogs down and listen to him. (laughs) He says that as long as he remains the United States champion, he will continue to be the face of America. Owens says that nobody, including AJ Styles and Chris Jericho, will take that away from him. He takes a seat on commentary to bring some much-needed Canadian influence to the booth. Ooh, is that a jab because no more Moro Ronaldo? I don't know. Which leads to <laughs> AJ Styles and Baron Corbin. It main event match. And this was a very, very good match. Again, Corbin is showing once again that he belongs. He can hang in the main event picture. And we'll go into some news news part of the show. We got some news on Baron Corbin being pushed. So it looks like it's coming all to fruition. Guarantee he becomes champion by the end of the year. I'm calling it right now. He becomes champion. Um... If not, when some money in the bank and cashes in sometime. Uh, there's some sort of brawling on the outside when Styles throws Corbin into Owens on commentary. Uh, eventually, Corbin is thrown over the barricade and Styles gets into the ring to beat the count and Corbin gets count out. Smart move here not to make Corbin look weak and uh, Styles to still be a sort of credible heel winning by count out on purposely. So I love the way they did it. Smart booking right here. Probably one of the only smart bookings of the whole show. And... I love the ending. It doesn't make again. It doesn't make Corbin look weak. I love how Styles is not really turned full babyface like people are saying he's going to. I don't think he's gonna be babyface. I think he's just gonna stay with the what he is right now. And um, I would love this uh, if Owens did something at the end of the show. He didn't. He didn't get physical in any way. But I guess it's it's to prolong their build till backlash. The backlash is still like a month away. So. Is still leaving room for something between Styles and Owens to build. You think Cor- do you think Corbin gets added to this match? Triple threat? <sighs> Maybe. Because I don't know what else he's going to do at Payback. Or Backlash. Maybe he gets added. We'll see. I'm really intrigued. It's just crazy. Again, it's confusing as hell how they're making the minor title the top priority on SmackDown. And the WWE Championship is basically the minor title. It's weird. It's so weird. I don't know what's going on here. I'm, I'm glad they're elevating the mid card, but that should be elevating the 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 main card to be even better. But they're not. I th- I don't know if it has something to do with it, but I heard uh, after payback we're gonna get the debut finally of the new IC and the new United States titles. So mm. we'll see what happens. Um, I gave SmackDown a six. I'm gonna drop it down to a five because I didn't really enjoy it that much. 
Um, I changed my ring, so I'm giving it a 5 out of 10 this week. And Raw wins. Raw wins this week on a rare case. And, you know, it's fine with me. Raw needs to win some. There's got to be competition in the brand wars. So Raw wins this week for me. SmackDown wins meh. Yeah, for one, I want to know how many how many straight weeks SmackDown has won because their streak's yeah. over. Yeah, Raw wins this week. SmackDown gets a three from me. Ooh, all right, interesting rating. I only give it a five because we sort of had a Dillinger spotting because he had a stupid. But he did not have a match, which was yeah, bullshit. yeah, like a vignette to show that you know that he's an up and coming guy. Everyone knows who the fuck Ty Dillinger is. Why the hell did you have a promo video for him? Same with I know they're doing the Shinsuke thing makes sense because they're not trying to they're not trying to wear this guy out. So it, it makes sense. What I like do. when he make, when he when he comes once in a while because it, yeah. it keeps that you know aura you know, with you him. Don't make, you don't bore the entrance out. You're not going to make it stale and bland. So uh, Ty Dillinger still makes. I think he could have had a match, man. You can't stale that guy out. The ten chance are going to be over as fuck no matter what. They're over on both shows, man. They, they get, you hear the ten chance on Raw no matter. You what. You need a Ty Dillinger on both shows, but uh, <laughs> uh, AJ Styles and Corbin match was good, so yeah. it gets a three. So that's a review for Raw SmackDown, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll move into the next part of the show, and that is the list of ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's going to happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the list of ten, the part of the show where me and Cobra Cappy go over our top moments of the week. And we give it a rating of ten. Which is a good moment in a rating of it making the list, which is a bad moment. This week, though, I have only four. I could, couldn't think of five. I tried really hard. I only have four this week, so that's all right. I think Copy has five or four. We'll see what happens. But we have top moments this week. And I'll start up the show as always. Cobra Cappy, start us off. I got Cesaro versus Jeff Hardy in the singles match. I actually really enjoyed that match. It was They gave them a lot of time. It was like 20 minutes yeah, long. They got a lot of time this week, and I, I appreciate that. And but two really good in-ring performers, much as I hate Jeff Hardy. The guy's got talent. And Cesaro, we all know how probably the best talent on the roster besides Literally. AJ Styles. And they just had a really good match, and it was... I like to see that on Raw, and it led towards or built towards their tag team title match. I mean, yeah, they they did the whole um, what was it shaking each other's hand after the match, but I don't mind that. I don't care. It shows respect between the two teams, and for that, Cesaro and Jeff Hardy get a perfect. Yep, yep, I hundred percent agree with that. Especially with Matt with his whole yes, yes. thing going on. And staying on the topic of the Hardys, my first moment is a title win, and that goes to the Hardys, soon to be broken, thanks to the WWE. WWE is currently in talks with Impact Wrestling, surprisingly, I didn't think they would ever talk to each other, on getting the broken gimmick. WWE is trying to give Impact Wrestling a one lump sum instead of paying them royalties over the years for the broken gimmick and the merchandise. They will be flying off the shelves once they hit the shelves. Uh, Once the Hardys are broken, it is going to be wonderful. (laughs) And we'll be able to delete the other competition. And for that... The Hardys get a perfect and wonderful ten. Yes, that's right. You love going into the Matt Hardy I love character. Doing that voice, man. I love it. It <laughs> brings me joy. <laughs> My first list moment is that completely cringeworthy backstage segment between Alicia Fox, Dana Brooke, and Emma. <laughs> I don't know that. what the hell this I, was. I, you know, I didn't include it on the Raw reviews. I didn't want to talk about it. I feel so bad, bad for Emma being included with the two bottom feeders of the Raw women's division. Alicia Fox was talking about how she got the the the, 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 the gag gift in her and the, the powder went all over her face last week and Dana saying, oh, I feel bad for you. And then Emma came in and tried to talk to them both about how Dana was actually making fun of Alicia Fox, and they just had terrible acting throughout the whole thing. Alicia Fox is, goes, I'm not friends with you anymore, and Dana's like, uh, uh, that's not true, Alicia, and the acting was, like, worse than, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a terrible TV show or something, <laughs> but I can't right now, but it was the worst acting that I've seen on Raw by Dana and Alicia Fox, and for that, they both... You know what? You just made the list! It was awful. Uh, like it, it was like they were both reading off like cue cards. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh. My first list moment of the week goes to Ty Dillinger not having a match on SmackDown this week. We get a promo package? Why? What are we promoting him for? He just had two matches on on SmackDown. What the hell is he being kept off TV? There's a lot of people being kept off TV this week as well. Like Mickey, we didn't see Mickey J or not Mickey J. We didn't see Becky Lynch. What the hell is Becky Lynch this week? Huh? What the hell is that? 
Or is Dolph? I mean, Dolph Ziggler was there, but anyways, uh, there. Just Ty Dillinger. I don't know, man. It was just for the casuals to get to know him more. I don't, Why wasn't was he put it. in the six pack challenge? Why didn't he just face Dolph Ziggler or something, or Aiden English again? Just something. Why does he need to be kept off TV? Literally, it was just terrible, terrible booking in my opinion. I know you want to promote Dillinger and get him a little bit pushed, but that was the wrong way to do it. And for that, you know what? You just made the list. Terrible. Terrible, man. Not a 10 moment, uh, shockingly. My next 10 moment, Juggy Brown, turn your mic off for this one. No Roman Reigns on television. Gave us a nice break this week. It, <laughs> no it, felt, it felt like a nice breath of fresh air without having the looming Roman Empire on our shoulders all night. Thinking, when's he going to come out? Look out. Yeah, when's he coming? And it was nice to have a break from him for this week. I mean, and, and Raw won. And it did. And, it made, and shockingly, Raw was good when he wasn't there. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. But, uh, so for that, Roman Reigns not being on TV. <laughs> oh, God, yep. But I want to add to that. Those people that are, like, making fun of Roman Reigns for his brother dying, like, that, that that's, yeah, that, that, they're crossing that. the line there. Yeah. Roman, the character, you can hate him, but the guy. The brother. Yes. Yeah, gotta respect him, man. Come on. It, 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 it has nothing to do with his on-screen persona. There's some people in here that just make me sick. Anyways, uh, my next moment is a 10 moment, and that goes to Epico and Primo. Wow, Rose. who would have ever They're thought? Back. They're back. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> Juggy Rather Cappy, you can have a breath of fresh hashtag kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, my 10 moment. Finally, no more shotting stars, no more lost metadores, no more bullshit tag team gimmick from these guys. They're back to being who they actually are. And the gimmick they should always have been. Bring back Carlito for this, man. You gotta bring him back. They have an unreal finishing move. A powerbomb into a backstabber? That is an insane move. Man, when I show no self fell because he didn't see it, he, he's like, oh, He cringes a little bit. Anyway. A good way. Um, they could be a dominant heel team. I can, I think they have a, a definitely potential being a dominant heel team if they're pushed the right way. And for that, you know what? The Cologne brothers get a perfect. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. My next list moment is James Ellsworth not being on television. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm okay. kidding. Okay. That, that would be a list. Uh, that would be a, a ten moment. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I, I love Cringeworth. Anyways, uh, I, I couldn't decide between my last list moment, either between the participants in the six six man six pack challenge for the world title or Alexa pinning Sasha. I couldn't. I couldn't decide. <laughs> So either way, I'm pro- I don't want to talk about the Alexa and Sasha thing anymore. So I'm just going to stick with the participants chosen for the six-pack challenge. What? Why was Mojo Rawley, Eric Rowan, we know why Jinder Mahal was in it eventually, but th- they just pit... I feel like they, they had a bad, reverse, bad selection. They took all the mid-card guys and put them in the main title one. Luke Harper deserves a title shot. Okay. I would put Harper, Zayn, Styles, Corbin... Dillinger, yeah, and Ziggler can put on a good match. Just throw him in there. He he, he always he's twice in a week. There two weeks in a row now. He's competing in the dark match on Two or Five Live against Nakamura. But Rowan, Raleigh, and Mahal. Why were they even in the match for the main title? Yeah, it's terrible. And so for that, all the participants in that match. You know what? You just made the list. Yep, hundred percent agree. And sticking on topic of Jinder Mahal. And being a list moment, Jinder Mahal winning that match and becoming the number one contender for the wrong title. I don't care that he's getting pushed. I'm all for him getting pushed. Just in the right direction. It's terrible. He needs to be pushed into the right direction, into the mid-card title. Should be. I don't care if he wins the United Can you imagine him as a U.S. champion and being the anti-America guy? That makes sense! It's almost like what... what uh, Owens is doing, but you're never going to see uh, Jinder Mahal going, oh, I'm the face of America. No. He's going to, like, change it to, like, the, the India title or something like that. I don't know. Something like that. For that, just the WWE makes zero sense for the SmackDown roster right now, what they've done to it in this stupid shakeup. And for that, Jinder Mahal, you're going to be number one contender for the wrong title. You know what? You just made the list. Awful. Awful. I don't agree. Especially with... Dumpster fire. <laughs> Especially with that... He cut a good promo after, but that seems like a good promo to cut for the US title. Literally. Seriously. Wrong title, guys. We're, we're, we can get behind gender, just for the right title. 
My last moment, I'm going to end with a 10, and that is Braun Strowman's destruction this week on Monday Night Raw. He was the MVP of Raw this week. Not even close. Um, I mean, he just looked dominant finally. Instead of having him back away from people and making him look like the the, the monster amongst men and finally going off his or else thing, finally going through with that, and just the destruction that he had throughout the show. I love to see Braun in this kind of way, and I, I'm jumping on the Braun bandwagon, man. I'm really liking Braun right now. I'm going to have to agree with that, too. I'm jumping on, too. I never thought I would say that. I showed us to our boy Tyler Jones for you know telling us a year ago that this guy would be good. But yeah. uh, So for Braun and <laughs> just breaking the ring and Big Show going through the ring for a third time in his career, it gets a... 10. And my last moment of the week... And it's going to be a 10 moment. And that goes to, it talks about that same match. That goes to John Cone for taking one of the most brutal spots I've ever <laughs> seen by a referee take, man. He, I, I don't think he was supposed to land that way. Just the way the ring collapsed and he fell out. And he took it like a champ, man. Now, there's a, I think there was a, uh, a YouTube video of him after getting uh, treated by medical staff. I think John Cone is going to be back soon. I hope he gets like a standing ovation or something because he took a hard bump. And it actually hurt him badly. Like you can even see the referees doing the X symbol on him, man. So good for John Cone. John Cone, for you taking that bump, you get it perfect. Ten. Yes. He's taken a bigger, better bump than The Rock has taken in the last two years. Woohoo! Where have you been, Rock? Oh, yeah. Fate the I love the one meme. Yeah, I love the one meme. It was like, <laughs> John Cone died last night for this, and it shows yeah. Jinder doing his pose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're getting to the last part of the show, guys, and we have a lot of news and rumors for you guys this week. It's going to be, it's going to take up a lot of time. So, and that is WWE Headlines. Hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, a part of the show where we talk about any news and rumors related to the WWE. We got a God. lot of headlines this week. I love that down. theme music. Love uh, that intro music. It's so good. I want to like blare it when we finally reach WrestleMania. Yeah, I think so. If and you guys want to know where we blare are, WrestleMania, the theme. just listen for the headline music. We'll be like our back call. <laughs> Anyways, um, we got a lot of headlines this week. We got seven. Holy man. Seven detailed headlines. So brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. We'll start it off with backstage news on big pushes for 2017. Dudley's interest in Baron Corbin has been obvious ever since he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 32. But fresh reports from the Wrestling Observer suggest a main event push is imminent. Ooh. Speaking of Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer claimed that WWE officials have highest hopes for Corbin and they do for Braun Strowman over on Raw. Meltzer claimed that Strowman and Corbin will, would receive pushes on their respective brands, but that right now it is uh, a ladder, the ladder of who is expected to reach the main event summit bef before his Raw counterpart. Uh, by the time WWE began building towards SummerSlam, this will, well, begins building towards SummerSlam this August, there's a good chance that Corbin will finally be in the mix for the WWE title. And it's hard to argue that he'd be a fine opponent for Randy Orton come into pay-per-view. Over to on Raw, Braun Strowman has been programmed opposite Roman Reigns in a top-line feud already. Uh, but all signs are pointing towards Reigns' victory at payback before the Divide's ex-Shield member moves on to Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. Some other news on Corbin. Corbin is also being said that his character will receive some minor tweaks here and there. And it's also his theme song for his coming push. Interesting. I wonder what they're going to they, do with his theme song, man. Are they, they going to give him the gender uh, no, treatment? Uh, no. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm, I'm excited for these two pushes, man. It's going to be great to see uh, Corbin finally getting a shot. It just proves to you and it shows you guys how much Vince loves his homegrown, bo <laughs> homegrown boys. And Both of right. them from the Performance Center. Yeah. So it's going to be cool to see. I think uh, Strowman deserves it. Corbin deserves it. We'll see what happens. Uh, Juggy Brown put Mahal dethroned Reigns this week for most hated superstar. Hashtag Tuesday Night Steroids. <laughs> That's great. Uh, next bit of news. Mike Bennett and Maria Kanellis are heading to SmackDown Live? Yes, they are. Mike Bennett and Maria Kanellis Bennett are likely heading to WWE. According to PWTorch.com, Wade Keller is reporting that WWE made the duo an offer that was more appealing than returning to Impact Wrestling. It appears that, that be, <laughs> it would appear that they will be going straight to SmackDown Live rather than starting off in NXT. I don't know. I could, I could see them starting on NXT. I mean, NXT's getting kind of bare. They kind of got to restock the shelves yeah, a bit. I think maybe they should go to NXT. The duo have reportedly turned down offers to do podcasts, which could also be an indication that they are WWE-bound. 
So what does that mean for the couple? Does Total Divas have a picture in line for Mike Bennett? And oh, Canellas? no. <laughs> oh, man, I could see it happening, man. They're so dramatic. I see them being on there. Um, next bit of news, NXT TakeOver Chicago matches listed so, so far. If you don't want to know, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, turn down your headphones or turn off the podcast and skip ahead five minutes. Uh, NXT TakeOver matches are being listed right now. You know what? You don't even have to skip the line. Just, you're going to find out anyways. The three matches announced so far for NXT TakeOver Chicago. Bobby Roode versus Hideo Tommy for the NXT title. That's gonna be that's that's an interesting matchup, man. Yep. That's crazy. You know Hideo Tommy's getting the huge GTS chance, man. <laughs> it's in Chicago. That's gonna be nuts. Uh DIY versus Authors of Pain for the NXT tag titles in a ladder match. See those two lugs trying to climb a ladder. Oh, God. Uh, they're going to get a, a Big Show reinforced ladder. Uh, and then the NXT Women's title is a fatal four-way. Asuka, Ember Moon, Nikki Cross, and Ruby Riot. Holy shit. Didn't That's they already have crazy. a multi-woman match? Yeah, but it, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay were in it. It was Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, Ember Moon, and Asuka. But now they're adding Nikki Cross and Ruby Riot. Nikki Cross, the freaking nut that she is. No, Nikki Cross was in the batch before. Yeah. Peyton, they replaced Peyton Royce with... Ruby Riot. Yeah. That's going to be sick. I think it's going to be a sick match, just saying, because Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross are, are showing their feuds with each other in the last couple of NXT tapings. I mean, and the obvious one, Ember Moon trying to get redemption on Asuka. Asuka's retaining. Like, Oh, man. It's so. T- I could see Ember Moon finally winning it here, though. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, next bit of news Paige's WWE. Oh, status. no. Not good news, by the way. Oh, no. Uh, There are currently no storyline plans for Paige moving forward once she is recovered from her neck surgery. According to Dave Meltzer of F4WOnline.com, the Rock's Rock's movie about Paige might end up being the only reason she is brought back to television at this point. It is also unknown if she wants to come back since being on the road constantly could affect her relationship with Alberto L. Patron. (laughs) And with him been talking a lot of smack lately i know you was drunk but still um if she comes back please god don't put her in the bottom feeders with alicia fox and dana brooke i'm so scared for her to come back now man i really don't know what to think of this so i'm just gonna move on uh details on why jinder mahal is being pushed so this is why guys these is these are credible sources here so pay attention uh there is more information coming out about why jinder mahal was made the number one contender for the wwe title Straight from the backstage reports, Vince McMahon clearly feels that the company is missing the traditional anti-American heel with Rusev being injured. It is possible that Mahal has been given this spot because of Rusev's injury. SmackDown Live is also in need of a top heel, and WWE doesn't want to put Corbin in that spotlight until the bigger shows later this year. WWE currently doesn't have a native Indian star and could be looking to grow one in the market with a guy that is ripped and fairly tall like Mahal. No great Kali 2.0? There's also the belief that WWE can push Mahal since it doesn't really matter who gets pushed because people watch the brand for not specific stars. I don't think that's true at all. Anyways, the general idea is that the fans that complain about Mahal are going to keep watching and will continue spending money on the product anyway. And that the main one of the other main reasons of Jinder Mahal being pushed is so there you can expand its region into India. Yeah, okay. They're all Roman Reigns fans over there, by the way. They're not. They're gonna give a shit about Jinder Mahal. He's Canadian for one. He has, he's from Indian descent. He's not even actually Indian. And then the Bollywood boys. And the or, Bollywood boys, the Singh brothers. It's Singh motherfucker. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're just gonna move on. That's the rest of the reason why Jinder Mahal is getting pushed. Because he deserves it with this new diet he's on. Sure, his new diet. No, oh, Greg saying same page to SmackDown. Well, that would actually help, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> details on Ronaldo and WWE's follow. I got a, this is a long, long story here, so listen, this is uh, crazy. I can't believe this is actually being released. Dave Meltzer of F4WOnline.com provides some more information on Ronaldo's falling out with WWE. It appears that the first issue with Ronaldo was back when Ronaldo did commentary with Jerry Lawler. Lawler had start did calling Ronaldo MR in the in the same fashion that Lawler would call Jim Ross JR. However, Mouser noted that it was likely an inside rib since the the term MR was used as an offensive slur that stood for mental retard during the period that Vince McMahon and Lawler got were growing up. Hmm. 
Meltzer also noted that Ronaldo was told he could be himself on commentary at first, but as time went on, Vince McMahon wanted Ronaldo to act more like Michael Cole. McMahon was said to be frustrated with Ronaldo's annoying style and Tom Phillips becoming the fourth member of the announcing team was the first public sign of it. Wow. Because Ronaldo was different, Meltzer described the situation in WWE as being like high school with Ronaldo being seen as the weird kid and being made the butt of the jokes. Apparently, the hazing and ribbing towards Ronaldo came from far more people than just JBL. While people having different interpretations of the situation, most feel that JBL has been a scapegoat, made a scapegoat, for the people that run the company and encourage this behavior, such as Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. Woohoo! Yeah, buck tooth bunny back there. Uh, one wrestler told Meltzer he, as in Layfield, fucked with lots of new guys simply because he could. I don't know if JBL is tough, but all these guys were scared to stand up to him in fear of getting fired. I think that was the old school thing. Like, they used to rib each other back in the day, and JBL is the attitude era. You know what I mean? He yeah. was part of that. I think it's an old school thing. Yeah. As previously noted, WWE is in no negotiations with Ronaldo representatives about working out a settlement for the remainder of his contract. So it's upsetting. Crazy, that they... crazy news. I'm going to cut this bit out of the podcast and post it as a single bit on Twitter. Because I think that needs to get out there. I don't think a lot of people know about this. That is insane. And I actually take it as a credible source because Meltzer is, is right with a lot of stuff. Like, he's almost 100% accurate. It's unfortunate that they couldn't sit down and talk it out yeah. with each other. And, and that's poor Ronaldo, man. The guy's been the best commentator they've ever gotten they in, want him since to be, JR. They want him to be and Michael they want Cole. Be like Michael fucking Cole? No Why? one likes Michael Cole. <laughs> They boo Michael Cole. God. Like, yeah, Michael Cole's his own thing, but you got to have an alternative. Ronaldo brought a unique style to the commentary table. No wonder he fucking left. I want him to leave now that I hear this. He wants a unique... Get out of there. I'll get as far away from WWE as possible. He has a unique style. God, he brings a unique dynamic I, to it. And I, he actually, uh, he was doing a match for boxing or something. He was calling a boxing right? match. Yeah. And as the guy came out, he said... Former professional wrestler. God, it feels good to say that well, that line again because he wasn't allowed to say it in WWE. Yeah. It just makes me sick how WWE is all about anti-bullying and there's actually bullying going in. Like CM Punk, it goes back to CM Punk's fucking his rant. He's right. He's been right. Vince McMahon is the biggest bully in, in the world. I don't know about in the world, but it's insane. <laughs> it's incredible, man. But it's crazy. I do think there is a little too much ribbing. And I think it, it does cross the line sometimes. It, it, it's almost like Derby doesn't give a fuck about mental health. They don't take that into account either, and they should. Because that's actually a huge topic that gets uh, gets shoved under the mat a lot in, in a lot of stuff in, around the world. Like a lot of things like sports, um, the media. It just, it, people just don't don't give a fuck, and they should. I'm all for mental health awareness. So, we're not, you know what? Maybe it wasn't a good environment for you, man. Get out of there. I'm happy for you and what you're doing. And your your, uh, your your future endeavors, man, are going to be way better than what you're doing in WWE, man. You never were used properly there anyway. So good for you and all and doing your own thing. Uh, move on to the last two bits of news. And there are updates on Nakamura and Goldberg, not together. So it's two separate stories. Relax. Thank God. Uh, the reason why Shinsuke Nakamura has been uh, having main event dark matches against Dolph Ziggler is because WWE wants to prevent fans from leaving the building once SmackDown Live and Tool, uh, when SmackDown Live ends and Tool for Live begins. Also, the belief is that WWE wants to save the televised Nakamura vs. Ziggler match for Backlash in Chicago, where Nakamura is expected to get a unreal reaction. I like that. I like that. No, oh, Ronaldo to New Japan. That'd be crazy, Greg. I think he might want... I don't know. He, he's more of an MMA guy, too, uh, Greg, so he might just stick with his MMA stuff. Uh, regarding Goldberg's recent run with WWE, Dave Meltzer is reporting that Brock Lesnar was looking out for uh, of Goldberg's best interests. And Goldberg trusted Lesnar. Because Lesnar was winning at WrestleMania, it was Lesnar that wanted Goldberg to look as strong as possible leading up to the event. While WWE and Goldberg still have merchandise agreement in place, there is no such rush to sign Goldberg to a new deal and is also unknown if Goldberg would look as strong against another opponent that doesn't have the creative and political influence that Lesnar has. I don't care to see Goldberg back again, but if he comes back, who does he face? The Rock. I think they rekindle a few. Or Triple H. It's going to be with another like high legend like that. You can't put him against a new guy. It's they already saw what he like did that. to Kevin Owens. It's got to be someone like that. That's it. Yeah, I, that's the only way I could accept Goldberg coming back. If not, man, just right into the sunset. You've done what you need to do. you wrestle for your kid. You won the title in front of your kid. What else do you need to prove? Just go into the Hall of Fame next year. Yeah, Who cares? Just, just end it off, man. You don't need to prove anything else. You just 
I don't think you're going to get the same reaction from fans again if you come back. That's, yeah, unfortunately, probably not. No. It's a shame. Whatever. But it's going to wrap it up. I think that's everything uh, we've done on the show. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's good. I, I have nothing else to say. It's been, uh, I hope next week's uh, a little bit better. A little bit better. Bitter. Better. <laughs> uh, we'll see if it's bitter. Could be. We'll never know. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for week number three of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Top Moments of the Week segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news and rumors related to the WWE. Remember, every week, The Lowdown Show is broadcasted right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP live or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching The Lowdown Show. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at NoHoldsBarWP and join in the conversation. Have your thoughts and questions right, right here on the show at the beginning of the show. We are also available to follow on Facebook and Instagram by searching no Holds Bar WP. All links will be in the description below for you guys on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week I'm continuing to be joined by my corporate co-host, the boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Blissful boss, don't forget about Blissful that. Blissful boss, sorry, Thank my you. bad. And we are always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Use the